Coming up, we're talking about tablets, we're talking about graphics cards, and could it be that we actually have contest details? Yeah, we do. The bar has been set wicked fast. It rocked in the benchmarks. We're gonna up the ante uh, a little bit. Processing power, Maybe. I kinda understand this. Hey, welcome to Tune Up Geeks. I'm Aya Zachter alongside Dave Altavilla and Marco Cipetta from HotHardware.com. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Tell him, Marco, how we doing? We're doing great. Super. <laughs> and once again... Any better, any better and it'd be illegal. Nobody cares. They only want By to talk gum. about technology. We know this. Let's, talk to, let's start talking about technology. Dave, I hear you have a tablet over there. I think it's a, a G-Tab. And uh, I heard that you actually ended up rooting it. So why don't you tell us about this tablet? How was it? And why did you bother to root it? Rudy. Yeah, I got all... I got all... <laughs> what did you say? It was a Rudy chant. Rudy. Rudy. <laughs> Rudy. <laughs> so... So what do you yeah, got there? You know, I got all down and dirty with this thing because I was fed up with it, to be honest with you. Uh, ViewSonic's G tablet. I'll hold it up here for the world to see. Here it is. Is this the 10-inch? 10-inch slate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, it's, it's, it's built on NVIDIA's Tegra 2 processor, uh, 5 12 mega RAM, 16 gig of ROM on board for storage, and comes with Android 2.2 as a base operating system, but also comes with this thing called Tap and Tap, which is this UI that uh, ViewSonic uh, laid over the top of it for, you know, just basic functionality kind of stuff. And it really got in the way. It was bloaty. It was... You know, just uh, extraneous, you know, bloatware that I just, I wasn't very fond of, to be honest. And come to find out that a lot of this is a result of Google sort of limiting the manufacturers with respect to their operating system with Android uh, on slates larger than seven inches. So, for example, on tablets in the, you know, an Android tablet 10 inches or larger, you're not going to get things like the Android Marketplace, and you don't get a lot of uh, the stock Android apps that come with Froyo. So manufacturers have to do some some funky things. There is a tablet OS coming down the pipe from Google, uh, as we know, Honeycomb. But but you know, Android 2.2, quite frankly, on something that large, isn't quite ready for prime time yet, unless you decide you want to root this thing and strip away all the you know overlay that the folks at ViewSonic decided to put on it to make it more user-friendly, which really kind of, you know, did it a disservice. And, uh, yeah, so I visited XDA Developers Forum. Great site, by the way. Those guys are going to be making a mint before you know it. And, you know, it, it took certainly some, you know, hand-waving and black magic and all that good stuff. But uh, lo and behold, I've got a stripped-down version of Android 2.2 on this thing, um, you know, with Android Marketplace. Had to install this application called Z4 Root to actually get to the you know root access permission on the device, and then I installed a ROM called TNT Lite, which backs off you know all of TNT Tap and Taps uh, bloatware and lets Android shine. It was it was fun and it was tiring to get it installed, but it was fun. Now you were able to get the app market onto there. Did you install any applications and did they work right off the bat, or did you have to like fi uh, fiddle with those too? Yeah, you know, and, and that was, you know, good. You sort of teed me up. You're my straight man there, I asked. That, that was actually, you know, the, the main motivation for, for rooting the device was that, you know, I couldn't easily get on a lot of our standard benchmarks, which are on the um, Android Marketplace, things like NeoCore, Linpack, Benchmark PI. These are all on, on Android Marketplace. And to, to do that, I really had to get Android Marketplace on the tablet. And so, I ended up, you know, jumping through hoops a little bit, getting Android Market to work on the tablet by installing this, this, you know, third-party ROM from XJ Developers Forum, and uh, yeah, I was able to download and install any app virtually from the Android Marketplace, get it onto the device. Uh, although it was something that ViewSonic and, you know, frankly, manufacturers, any manufacturer currently right now with Android 2.2, are not allowed to have on a 10-inch tablet. So. Worth doing if you're the kind of tinker and uh, learned a lot in the process. And uh, we're going to have a full review with Benchmarks uh, Integra 2, by the way, under the hood here. Kick some serious butt. Um, so stay tuned for that. Now, Marco, you are talking about graphics cards next up. Uh, yep. Huge surprise here. What are we talking about today? So we got some, some good stuff. Uh, <laughs> this is what we're going to talk about. Launched this morning, actually. Well, Tuesday morning. 
it, depending when we post this podcast. So this is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 560 Ti. NVIDIA has resurrected the uh, Titanium moniker. Um, it is a relatively affordable graphics card, going to be priced anywhere between 249 and 269 depending on the clock speeds. And it, it turned in some excellent, excellent uh, benchmark scores. The GPU on the card is uh, codenamed GF114, and it's really just a, a respin of the GF104 that was on the uh, GTX 460. But this new revision of the chip hits higher clocks, all of its shader cores are enabled. Um, it just is able to stretch its legs and it decimates the GTS for, GTX 460, performs well across the board. Now there's another one, I think there's an AMD that came out at the same time just to screw with Nvidia? It, basically, <laughs> yes. So this is, this is kind of funny, the, the GPU guys are constantly going at it. It's, it's really one of the most vicious kind of rivalries you know, in tech. It's uh, AMD and NVIDIA. So just in time for this launch, AMD dropped a one gig Radeon HD 6950 in the lab. And it turned in numbers that, you know, depending on the game, were slightly ahead of the 560. Sometimes it's right on par. Um, generally, I'd say the 6950 is faster with current gen DX11 titles, you know, cutting edge titles. But they're really close. It's not a night and day difference. But what I, what I found most interesting about the one gig card that arrived here, the date of manufacture was August 2010. It's been sitting on a lab somewhere in AMD for months, just waiting for the perfect time to arrive. Oh, that's a little harsh. Gun to your head, <laughs> if you got to pick one, which one do you pick? So it really depends on how you're going to use it. No, no, no. It. Gun if to your head. You have to pick one. <laughs> no friends. I, I no, I love them the same. What's the one to get? 6950 if a gun is to my head, but there are caveats if you want me to explain. Oh! <laughs> I'm sure it's all over in the review, isn't it? Yes, it is in the review. So that's a, a reason for the viewer to go to hothardware.com. Huh? I can almost hear the people at NVIDIA ringing up Marco right now. <laughs> Hello? My phone's already ringing. I got an idea. Let's switch, switch topics. Let's talk about the uh, Jolly Cloud uh, operating system. That's a version of Linux that's really meant for netbooks. I know Hot Hardware tried it out. Dave, what did you find? Yeah, we're hot hardware, but we tried out a bit of software. And actually, <laughs> kudos to our, our buddy, Threevil, as we call him, the uh, funny way of spelling uh, his name, Evil, in the forum, Hot Hardware Forum member, uh, Jesse Litton, otherwise known as Evil, uh, in our forum, actually authored this piece. And we, we welcome Jesse to the fold. He, he, he's a Linux uh, buff and for sure uh, has contributed a, a a nice, uh, you know, uh, overview of Jolly Cloud. It's actually a Linux-based desktop, uh, very light-duty um, OS, and um, initially was targeted as a netbook, uh, you know, only sort of operating system, real light, um, you know, sort of uh, Linux distro. Uh, now uh, they're also positioning as a uh, recycle your computer OS. So basically, what what they're saying is this thing will run on anything. And um, it's a, a really, you know, fast, light, stripped down version of Linux with some really cool sort of, um, you know, UI and app like features with it. You know, it's, it's funny, you know, we're, we're seeing this explosion of the app on handsets and tablets and mids and all these different uh, ultra mobile devices. <laughs> and now we're seeing operating systems stripping down. Uh, for, you know, increased sort of portability and, and, and access um, with an app-like model, with, with, you know, a very simple app-like interface. So this thing allows you to, you know, run uh, a bunch of different uh, applications, uh, Linux apps that you can install that are free online. And, um, you know, we, he, he was thoroughly impressed with, with the OS, and uh, we're almost willing to try it out, too. What do you think about it, IS? Uh, I've tried Jolly Cloud a long time ago on a netbook, and it seems kind of limited, and it didn't seem as good as, well, Windows 7, flat out. Windows 7 basically kicked this, <laughs> kicked this thing's butt everywhere, and I don't really see the point of this unless you're trying to dumb down your machine, because everything's kind of locked away or hidden away, and it, I, I don't know if I really like that. Marco, it looked like you had something to say during this, because I saw you flash a grin uh, in one of my monitors there. Uh, what do, what do right. you think? I, I actually, you know... It, I don't think you should really compare it to, to Windows 7. It's, yeah, it's, it's an a, operating whoa, system. Nice. 
Well, it's an operating well, system. Well, I know. You're right. So, but what I was kind of thinking is for somebody that knows nothing about computers, you're setting up a PC for an aunt, a grandmother. <laughs> some, just to have a couple of icons on the desktop to launch a browser and word processor, I can see where it would be useful. And, you know, it's free, it's tiny, it'll run on anything. I, I, it's, it's interesting. I think it has its place. I, I think so as well. And, and Marco, you nailed it. Uh, you know, let's face it. Uh, there are a ton of mainstream users that just fire up their PC to run email and hop on the web, and, and that's really about it. And um, this thing has, you know, the ability to do that and more. You can load up Boxy on this. Um, there's all sorts of different plugins that are available to it, and you can also, it's got built-in sort of remote desktop functionality, so you can log into your My Jolly Cloud account and access your PC from any HTML5 based browser, which is Chrome right now, currently an HTML5 compatible browser. So not too bad. You know, it's impressive. And we think we're going to see a lot more of this, certainly if the folks from Google uh, have something to say in the, in the months ahead. Wouldn't Chrome OS pretty much just eat this thing's lunch? I mean, who's going to use a Jolly Cloud machine when Chrome OS comes out? Of course, it's not here yet now, is it? Well, it is. You can get it in the pilot <laughs> program. You guys don't have the CR48? Yeah, you maybe mean, we it's, do, it's, maybe we don't. Maybe. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let's talk about something. This this must be a mistake. It's on the rundown. It says Duke Nukem gets a uh, Duke Nukem Forever gets a release date. Now, when I was paying attention to games about ten years ago, I could have sworn I heard this story, and then I heard it a couple of years later. This isn't the same Duke Nukem, is it? This is the it same is. Duke Nukem. Can, can you believe it? After, what is it, like 13 years in development, it actually has a firm release date. Sure. I can't believe it. It's, it's almost funny that, so funny that we have to talk about it just to, just to get the jokes out. Shall we? <laughs> what are the sure, jokes? why don't you go first? <laughs> I, I, jokes? I, don't, I wasn't prepared for jokes. I, well, no, the, See, yeah, that's right. That's Duke right. Nukem you put Forever, us on the though. Spot. Jeez, I, I punched there. it right back to you. But freaking, so did, you see the, did you see the launch trailer that we posted up on the site? What I saw was the actual dates. And I just, I, at that point, I wasn't bothering. There's no way this is coming out. It's just not happening. So, I mean, no, well, it is going to come out May, May 3rd or May 6th, depending on your region. Uh -huh. um, the launch trailer is really funny. I mean, if you're familiar with Duke, he has all these funny one liners. You know, he's. Uh, you know, big muscle-bound goon who's, you know, basically a, a womanizer. But his, his delivery is just so funny. You have to watch the launch trailer. There's one little part in there where this, this giant alien with, uh, with pixelated boobs, you know, and with that Duke voice, he looks at it and goes, <laughs> I'd hit it. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> I, I think the trailer what's, what's is... The What's the favorite? What's his favorite uh, tagline? There, it's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. Well, I think he has to put his teeth in first. He's so old. <laughs> yeah, this thing is done. I don't. I mean, do you think people are going to buy this game? Actually, I mean, is, is the anticipation so great to the point where nothing this game can do can be as good as this game is in people's heads? I, I think no matter how good the game is, it's been relegated to the you know the funny department. It's kind of just a joke that it's being released. But Duke's got some some. You know, serious followers. It's going to be funny. It's not going to be cutting edge graphics wise, but it's going to be a nice mindless shooter. Kill some aliens. Look at some naked chicks. It's going to be fun. I, I think, and that's that's the hook with this game. And, and and this is kind of what I don't understand. I'm excited for it, and I'll tell you why. Um, when I first got into to PC gaming, I, I played a game called Leisure Suit Larry. Anybody remember that? I do. You guys yep. remember the, every single Larry? one. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There was some funny stuff in Leisure Suit Larry, and, and I enjoyed that game just to, to see what kind of goofy stuff you know Larry would do next, get himself involved in next. Same thing with Duke Nukem. There's a ton of humor in the storyline, and humor is great. And, and if you combine humor with action and you know a first-person shooter type environment, it's a win-win. I don't understand why we haven't had more humorous first-person shooters like Duke Nukem. I mean, we should have we should be laughing our butts off because that would entertain me. I mean, <laughs> I want to you know kill aliens too, but you know, make me laugh. You know, I want to yeah. be entertained. You got a good point. Gaming has gotten really, really ser serious to the point where it's Wicked. it's a forty yeah. to sixty hour campaign to beat the game. This is why I stopped playing, by the way, because I figured <laughs> forty to sixty hours for a game that's a job. Like yeah, like I could earn. Meanwhile. It. Meanwhile, you get Duke Nukem, you're going you're gonna to walk into a strip joint, throw out some dollar bills, and shoot some aliens. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is, are, is that what you're going to use as your criteria for your next contest? Do people have to go into strip clubs and, and shoot aliens? Or 
Probably so it's, not. it's a plus. It's a plus. If they can submit some picks from within the club, then that's a huge <laughs> plus. Um, but, you know, um, in, in all seriousness, we, um, we have been planning a couple of contests. We originally planned to give away a Sandy Bridge-based gaming rig. We're still hammering out those details, but we're sick of making you guys wait. So we're going to do a, uh, a nice, simple giveaway. I'm going to build it myself. Dave's donating some parts. I'm donating some parts. And our friends at OCZ coming through with the rest. We have a, a Core i7-870 with uh, 4 gigs of RAM, an SSD, a Radeon HD 6870, you know, in a really nice uh, Zygmatech case. We're going to post up the details up on the site, and all you got to do is come by HH and comment in the news and forum, and you're going to have a shot to win. So it's going to be, it's, it's very easy to enter. No Facebooking, yes. no weirdness. It's simply go to HH. There's the processor right there. See it? There it is. Fancy. Let's get a close-up of that there. Ooh. Ooh, baby. The power. The power. In the palm of my hand. Right there. <laughs> and don't forget, you could find everything we talk about at hotharbor.com or around the web at, are you guys ready for this? Dig.com slash hothardware. Twitter.com slash hothardware. Facebook.com slash hothardware. And YouTube.com slash hothardware vids. And once again, I still think you guys should go to hothardware.com because that's where everything starts. Good idea. And uh, I think we're done for this episode. We'll see everybody next week. And uh, good show, folks. <laughs>